Bonjour à tous. Uh, good morning, every, everyone. Uh, are, are we doing this in French in uh, Genève or in English? English, okay. Don't, perfect. Otherwise, French, it would be, it would be Quebec French. It's a, bit diff it's a little bit different. Québécois. Thank you. So this is a very different uh, company. Uh, <coughs> all the fund managers, I think you will like this because it's an annuity. It's, it's, it's really a, an annuity in time. It's a 29-year annuity uh, on a commodity, which is the commodity of the future, which is graphite. As you know, graphite is now becoming the material of the future in aerospace, automobile, medicine, construction, computers, electronics, and obviously uh, batteries. You saw yesterday the announcement that Tesla is now opening its <clears throat> fourth mega factory in, uh, in Berlin. It has one in New York, one in Nevada, now one operating in China. They buy more graphite than almost the current market, and it's just expanding very quickly. And that's a subset of the graphite market. Uh, the graphite market's a lot larger. Actually, the graphite market is as large as the nickel market. <clears throat> and, it's a, it, and there are very few projects of quality. At SRG Graphite, we own the largest deposit in the world of graphite, but also one of the best quality graphite that is available. Forward-looking statement. In Africa, there's some great countries, there's some more difficult countries, and I would say and then there's Guinea. Why? Because Guinea is extremely rich in bauxite. Bauxite is aluminum, and Guinea has 400 years of reserves of bauxite producing 35 to 40 percent of the world's bauxite. So you have all the big players, uh, the Americans, the, uh, the, the BHP, uh, Rio Tinto, you have the Russians, you have the Turks, you have everybody is there producing bauxite because it's, it's coming from Guinea. We now have in Guinea the largest graphite deposit. So, and Guinea, as you know, is on, on top of that, it's iron ore, it's gold, it's diamond. So it's a mining country. It's a very good mining country, which is bankable. Uh, when I built the semaphore mine there uh, years ago, you know, we had the French banks along with us, all the big banks. So Guinea is a bankable country. It has a great mining code and it has stability in its mind. They've never changed the royalties. It, it's, it's, it's a bankable country. So we are in Guinea. The beauty of Guinea as well for graphite is you can deliver across the ocean to North America. You can deliver to Europe very quickly and to Asia extremely quickly. And there, these are the, the clients, United States, Europe, and Asia for batteries and for the steel making industry. So as I said, uh, <clears throat> very interesting. The mineral resource is, is we'll talk about it, is, is unique. It's the largest deposit, the best quality. The management team, we've built four mine uh, on time and on budget in Africa. We've developed seven mines, sold some, kept some, produced up to last week over 400,000 ounces of gold uh, a year in Africa. Sadly, our mine was attacked last week by uh, terrorists, so we, had to, uh, we have stopped that mine for the time being, but uh, hopefully it will reopen in a couple of weeks. But we've been there, we know the area, we speak the language, we speak French. <clears throat> so we have, we have, we, we have the, the background to do this. The capital structure, because I funded these companies personally for a number of years. So currently the capital structure, insiders, we own 51%, we have control. And four of my friends who were with me in Semifo at the beginning, each own 5%. And we have a strategic American investor <clears throat> because, you know, Mr. Trump made graphite a strategic metal. It's not a metal, but it's an element. And, and, and they are buying from us. And we have a strategic American investor that came in and took 10% of the company. So it, it's, it's, we have the resource, the team, the capital structure, the money, and it, it's in the right market. We won't go to this, but a lot of people say lithium iron batteries should be called graphite batteries because half of the, the battery is graphite and it's not lithium. And actually, it's a, there's very little lithium in it. A lot of people are saying that we're going from 622 to 811, but that's on the cathode side, which is reducing 
the uh, the, the lithium or re reducing the cobalt, but we're never talking about changing the 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 the, the graphite. <clears throat> the graphite is the anode, and that's not changing. If something, it will go higher as where the Chinese are going into a new technology of batteries where the cathode will have a portion of graphene. And if you're not familiar, go on YouTube, watch a few videos on graphene. If there's one thing coming, it's graphene for the coming generations. So the project <clears throat> is at surface. It's 8.7 kilometer. It's an intrusion discovered by Marc-Antoine Audet from Sama Resources. It's an intrusion that comes to surface. It's pure graphite. We only will be mining the top 30 meters in oxide, so the plant doesn't need a ball mill, it doesn't need a cr no crusher, no ball mill, just a scrubber, we float it, we dry it, we bag it, we sell it. More profitable than gold, uh, and we have a 29 year mine life, mining less than 10% of the deposit. So yes, less than 10. Clearly, we're gonna grow our production profile, in the years to come from free cash flow. But for 29 years, this company will generate 50 to 60 cents per share of cash flow starting in 2021. Comparison, uh, and we've done all the tests, the med tests, all the tests, and you people will tell you, oh, graphite, I had a bad experience in graphite. Absolutely, because sadly, people were coming to you, showing you graphite projects that did not make sense, that were often on the east side of Africa, in Tanzania, in Mozambique, low quality, young graphite, bad mining codes, and I'm just going to open a, a parenthesis, but they don't tell you this, but in, uh, in Tanzania, or T T Tanzania, in the mining code, it says if there is a dispute between the mining company and the government, the government will be deemed right. That's it. End of the discussion. This is non-bankable. So, sadly, they, they put these things. So, there were a lot of companies, I'm sure you saw, where the projects never got started. In, 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 in a graphite project, you need to have offtake agreements. You need to have strong clients who buy the product, who've tested the product. The, the testing period for a product is two years. They take a kilo, five kilo, 50 kilos, half a ton, and a ton, and they do their production process. And then you quali they qualify you for their production process. And then they give you an offtake. So we have five offtakes that are currently signed with multinational companies, two in, in the United States, three in China. They are prepaying the product as soon as we get into construction. They will prepay 10% of the value, and the, the offtakes do not have a discount to the selling price. So there's a market for graphite, one in China, one in London. We'll take the two markets when we make the shipments, and we'll take the highest of the two price, and that will be the price on the invoice. So to go into a, a, pro, a, a, a graphite project, you need offtake. You need good quality, this is very important. I forgot to mention that this project's fully permitted. Environmental uh, permit is out, the mining permit is out, the construction permit is out, we are ready to go. And the distribution of the flake is very important. So we are four, as you can see uh, right here, 40% will go to the battery business, and this here is more into the specialty products, so which is expandable graphite in your telephone, in your computer, sorry, in electronics, refractories, foiled, and that is a steady business which normally would be filled with graphite from China, but China are not exporting graphite anymore. They are importing graphite because their battery business is exploding and they need it in country. We did, we, did do, we did build batteries as a test, and our graphite gets 36% uh, yield. The average of the graphite industry gets 30% yield. So we get 16% more than most graphite, and it's only a question of quality. The quality of the graphite makes all the difference in the world.
So the deposit, as I said, is 29 years with 10%. So, I mean, this is, in, 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 uh, in graphite, you're not resource bound, and it's not like gold, if you have a six-year mine life, eight-year mine life, we have 29 years. It won't be that because we're going to grow the production. But currently, if you look at those numbers, you look at the capex, is going to be about 100 million contingency and, and the, the up the owner's cost, we're at 123 million. If you look at any gold project, it'll be 300 million capex, 200 million, 400 million. If you look at lithium, it's going to be a billion dollar. Namaska, 1.5 billion. This is 100 million, 70% debt, 20% junior debt from probably a very large institution. Prepayment on the offtake contracts, 10 to 15 percent. Equity to raise, 20 million. It'll be a bought deal from one of our bankers, and we're not doing that for the next six months. So it's not happening short term. 28 percent IRR, and this is our on the, our worst scenario possible. Whoops, sorry. On our worst scenario possible, 28 percent IRR, 277. Uh, net present value, we're assuming a low selling price, we're assuming all of our expenses at the maximum, we have not yet outsourced anything, and we're producing 54,000 ton a year, which is our starter position. To double the, the, to double the production from 54,000 to 100,000 ton a year is an additional 20 million in CapEx. And then we'll double the production. And instead of having a free cash flow of about 40 to 45 million a year, which you see here on 29 years, we'll take that to 80 or 90 million a year. All of that with very few shares outstanding. And we own most of them anyway, uh, as the insiders own 51% of the company. So we're all, we've been following this critical path uh, over the last few years. We're extremely, after building four mines and developing seven, we know exactly what to do. So now what we have left is signature of a few offtake agreements. We have five signed for about 40% of the production. We'd like to be at 60% of the production. That means we, we, you know, we're, we're fully bankable with our European bankers. We have uh, financing to complete, pre-construction, detail engineering, construction will start, and beginning of production, 2021. In 2021, I'm sure you've all heard of Tesla's mega factory for batteries. If you're not, go on YouTube, put Tesla mega factory, go and take a look. It's a sausage machine. It throws batteries out every quarter of a second. They buy graphite, they use graphite. There are 72 mega factories in construction at the moment. Again, you want to verify that, go on the benchmark uh, website or any of the specialty uh, reports on, on, on batteries. And that's only for half of the market. The other half are foil, electronics, uh, you know, spare parts or parts in aerospace and refractories. So, but if you're looking at the AV revolution, there's really a very large number of factories in construction. We do talk to them. They talk to us. Yeah, we've been talking to German buyers up to yesterday morning. There will be a very large demand coming in now from Tesla and all the other manufacturers in Germany. So it's a, it's a hot commodity. We could sign tomorrow 100% of our production. We just don't want to do this. We want to keep flexibility. The other thing that's extremely important, and here in Europe you understand that, is what we call traceability of the mineral. You know, cobalt out of the DRC sadly is not traceable. Cobalt out of Cuba is not traceable. Tesla canceled their contract with Sherit because the cobalt was coming out of Cuba. So it's important for most car manufacturers that they can trace the mineral. Guinea signed the transparency agreement in 2007 because of SEMFO. We got them to sign that. And now Guinea is a traceable country. So strong government support. The team is my team that I had put together at the time. Uh, most of them followed. The board is the same. I'd just like to close on this. We have 70 million shares outstanding. Insiders have 51% of that. 
One American has 10%, four friends have five, so that we're at 80%. We'll be issuing a couple of shares to, 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 for, to, for construction. And I believe we're going to go to construction with 100 million shares, making about 50 million a year of EBITDA, and hence a very nice upswing and 29 years of mine life. So it's, it's a beautiful annuity coming into production. There's no geological risk, no mining risk, no metallurgical risk, no flow sheet risk. There's no financing risk. There'll be a construction time. We may be off a month or two or three, but that's something we will manage. And then we go into production and the, and the sales are committed and they're take or pay, committed, prepaid with multinational companies. So this should see a re-rating of the stock in the next few months. And when we give the green light to construction. We have the team in place, the Semifo team that I had for 18 years is now all back, the, the band's back together and we're building this mine starting now. Thank you very much.